we have all been socially conditioned to um, expect what a politician looks like and, and what they're meant to behave like, the way they speak, the way they look. And I think when a lot of people kind of saw me, they were like, what the heck? How, how someone like you ended up being Lord Mayor actually getting into politics? So Majid, thanks so much for coming and joining us uh, to chat about your new book, The Art of Disruption. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know Majid, uh, you were Lord Mayor of Sheffield, um, an MEP and member of the Green Party. And we are sat at a nice intimate distance from each other, uh, very far away as we uh, just come out of lockdown. Um, so Majid, to start with, um, in your book, you say um, that you like to, you know, bypass some of the small talk by asking questions that are a bit deeper, like, what are you most excited about at the moment? So I'm going to start by asking you, what are you most excited about at the moment? Great question, straight to the, <laughs> no, no small talk, big talk. One thing I'm really excited about at the moment, I'm just in the process uh, with a friend of actually setting up a pan-European NGO that's basically focused on racial and climate justice. So uh, I've been doing a lot of work with lots of amazing activists and organisers across Europe, and that's something that's been taking a lot of my time, but something I'm probably at this moment that I'm most excited about at the moment, for sure. So the book, Art of Disruption, uh, what are we disrupting? Who are we disrupting? What's the focus? So um, the idea of so the book and um, the Art of Disruption and Manifesto for Real Change, I guess it kind of stems from a 10 points and kind of 10 set of commandments. Well, they were originally uh, Sheffield's 10 commandments, but they're kind of just 10 commandments I feel like I've kind of lived by and I kind of use day to day. But I also kind of think it's something that ordinary people, whether that be whether in your politics or your day to day, regardless of what walk of life you're from. I reckon it's something that people can actually follow from. So whether that be simple things like, honestly, just being kind to people. I know it's kind of overly said a lot of times, but it really, really makes a difference because at the end of, at the, end of the day, everyone's got their own struggles. People don't know what people are suffering from. And I think it can really, really make a big difference. How do you take yourself from someone who is not part of a political party or, you know, just has like a vague yeah. interest to then, you know, <laughs> Becoming Lord Mayor, becoming part of a party, all of that you know, stuff. I started off local. I was like, mm. it was the end of 2014, sorry, mid-2014, seeing the rise of UKIP and so much rhetoric of fear, hate and division. And I remember thinking to myself, with everything that's happening in the world, if I can at least make my small part of the world, my community, my Sheffield, that bit better, that's at least me having some sort of positive contribution. I kind of keep pushing myself, but taking myself out of my comfort zone. Obviously, with, you know, in, in the sense of MEPs not working anymore from from the UK, we've left the we've left that European Union. What was it like for you to be an MEP when you know and like find find out that there was that end date and that it was it was difficult on so many levels. In honesty, so it's like for someone who voted to remain, actually campaigned to remain in the European Union, it was basically just sad to see the fact that um, we were leaving the European Union based on a campaign of fear, hate, and also just a lot of lies, in all honesty. And I think as well, just even from a personal point of view, like a lot of people I kind of work with, the, the staff that I kind of put together my team, it, it was a bit sad. But also I think it was the case of seeing a lot of young people that are now losing a lot of great opportunities that all the generation were privileged to kind of have the fact that they can freely work, travel, fall in love in so many different other countries. It, it was a great, and uh, it was a great loss. To be honest with you, it's, the same reasons, uh, like, the fight for a better world, a better community, a better country doesn't stop with a referendum or an election. Like, those struggles are still there, whether that be trying to fight racism, whether that be trying to tackle the climate crisis, whether that be supporting migrants. It's, all those issues are still there, so the struggle and the fight continues whether or not we're still in the European Union. We're still part of Europe. Like It's not like we're going to float away somewhere else. So <laughs> it's um, it's in our best in interest as a country to kind of work closely with a lot of other countries. And do you think that it, we will at the moment? Honestly, I, I can only hope so. It's I'll put it this way. I am not filled with confidence and optimism with, with the current um, Conservative government in terms of the way they're... Um, rubbing shoulders with people like Donald Trump and kind of putting a lot of our um, values and a lot of our principles at stake, basically. So I haven't got much confidence, but what is the alternative? Like, the other, should I just, should we just kind of pack it in and be like, well, it's shit, let's just basically just go back home and just not do anything and moan about it? Or do we just become agents for that change and really kind of take it upon ourselves and 
do something about it. And I think for me, it's that is the, the only option that I've got.